Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, uh, so I wanted to talk about some poetry that has interested me, and we are at the end of my LGBT celebration period uh, of about three months. Do not fret, we will likely explore more, uh, or I will likely explore more LGBT poets in the future, and you are welcome to as well, since I've given you a host of LGBT poets to explore. Uh, so, uh, today's poem is all about what appears to be the down and outs of society. I am referring to Chaplinesque by Hart Crane. For those who don't know, Hart Crane is an American poet, uh, who lived between the late 1800s and the early 1900s. Uh, he was mostly known for his poetry, which was described as very difficult to read, and I 100% see that. I almost skipped over his poetry, uh, but I figured it's always good to talk about, you know, the difficult poetry in, in addition to the easy poetry that you can find out there. And I also wanted to sort, show, sort of show you the complexities of LGBT poetry, um, because it's, um, it's important to, you know, talk about every aspect of that. He was kind of described as a neo-modernist uh, and was compared to T.S. Eliot at the time, although a lot of people have or, or sort of like dismissed his poetry because it was so difficult to read. Uh, but uh, more modern interpretations of his poetry have been much more positive and noted that uh, rather than reviewing the poems line by line, they should be taken as the whole, um, which I, I think I feel is, is, is pretty true. Um, yeah, as I was talking about before, I'm talking about LGBT poets. He was gay. Uh, unfortunately, he was gay during a time when, um, you know, being gay w was not as well celebrated. And so uh, he, like, he was persecuted for that. Uh, he was, he, uh, he, the reason he died was that he was hit, or he hit on somebody on a train uh, who was not gay, and um, they, they, there was an uproar about it, and a lot of people on the train beat him up uh, in, a, in, a, in a homophobic attack. And then uh, he felt so down about that that he killed himself by jumping uh, off the train into the water or the rocks below, which, which was which some people consider an act of suicide, although you could also interpret it as, a, as the people who were on the train lying about how he died and maybe it being a lynching of some sort, although we don't really know for sure. Uh, but you know it's it's important not to you know f uh, dwell on the on the on the circumstances of his death, but rather celebrate his works in life, and uh, we we are going to do that. So without further ado, let's talk about Chaplinesque. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Chaplinesque. We make our meek adjustments, contented with such random consolations as the wind deposits and slithered in two ample pockets. For we can still love the world who find a famished kitten on the step, and no recesses for it from the fury of the street, or warm, torn elbow coverts. We will sidestep into the final smirk dally the doom of the, that inevitable thumb that slowly chafes its puckered index toward us, facing the dull squint with what innocence and what surprise. And yet these fine collapses are not lies more than the pyros of any pliant cane. Our obsequies are, in a way, no enterprise. We can evade you and all else but the heart. What blame to us if the heart live on? The game enforces smirks, but we have seen the moon and lonely allies make a grail of laughter of an empty trap ash can. And through all sound of gaiety and quest have heard a kitten in the wilderness. In terms of analysis, there is a little bit worth talking about. Uh, as I mentioned before in the author section of this video, uh, it is it is a mistake to, to take his poems line by line because uh, it, what matters is more is is the effect is the whole is what you're what you're feeling with this poem is is more what uh, Hart Crane is really trying to to get at. Um, but if we're going to you know talk about this poem, we first have to talk about the title of the poem, Chaplinesque. 
Um, and so when we say that, what what does it mean? There's there's probably a lot of people out there in the world named Chaplin, you know. But I think there's only one person who comes to mind when you read this poem, and that is Charlie Chaplin. For those who might not be aware, Charlie Chaplin was an actor in the early 1900s. He was known for um, silent movies or uh, um, black and white movies. Um, he starred in one of my favorite movies, The Great Dictator, a uh, pretty solid uh, movie that criticizes Hitler, of all things. Uh, but he, he was also known for playing the character of the Tramp, a down-and-out character uh, who was sometimes accompanied by a child uh, and relied on the goodness of society, although sometimes society did not treat them so well. And they came up in, the, in conflict against people who had money, the, the wealthy and the elites of society who thought that they knew better and were willing to exploit anyone that they could. And you see that in this poem. Uh, you see it in the first verse. Uh, he says, We make our meek adjustments, contented with such random consolations as the wind deposits in slithered and too ample pockets. And you can kind of see that there. You say, We make our meek adjustments. The, the, um, the, uh, the tramp character, Chaplin, was seen as somewhat meek, not very powerful. Um, but they, it also says, contented with such random consolations as the wind deposits in slithered and too ample pockets kind of indicating, you know, slithered into ample pockets, like those who have li little, you know, the, the, uh, it's kind of random, so they're not, maybe they might not get that much, and those who have ample pockets, they might get more than they deserve, kind of indicating the inequality in society. In the second verse, the, the narrator notes, um, you know, uh, we can love the world and we can love those people who find a kitten on the doorstep and decide to take it in uh, and shield it from the horrors of the world. And then in the, you know, the third and fourth uh, verse, it's talking about pierrots and stage scenes, kind of indicating that life is a bit of a, a, a theatrical piece. Um, that, that you have the heroes who might be us and the villains who might be those more wealthy people um, who see us and, and are determined to stamp us out because what our poverty represents and how we're asking for maybe a little bit more. Um, I, I do like how they say um, in the fourth verse, we can evade you and all else but the heart. What blame to us if the heart live on? Kind of like... Um, you know, we can evade you and, and we can we can try to survive and you might try to kill us. But what blame to us if, if we manage to survive, if our message might live on. Um, and then in the final verse, they say the game enforces smirks. But we have seen the moon and lonely allies make a grail of laughter of an empty ash can. And I think what that gets at is that um, like the game, it can be somewhat difficult and it can make us somewhat jaded. Uh, but we have seen in empty ally, uh, alleys like a, a great uh, something beautiful made out of something terrible, like a like a grail of laughter made out of empty ash cans. Um, so kind of um, something beautiful made out of something not so not so great, an empty ash can. Uh, although you could also argue that it's kind of living in delusion there, that you're seeing a grail of laughter, something positive and something that is ugly. You're not seeing the world for what it is. I personally think it's the former, but you can make an argument there for the latter. But as I said um, earlier in this poem, you have to view it through the lens of the entire poem, taken as a whole rather than the sum of its parts. And I do think that this, this poem is, is highlighting the down and outs of society and the people who they wish to, to exploit, kind of arguing for a, a persistence and arguing to stand up against those who, who mean to exploit you. Uh, which is a very a very positive message. Now, whether or not you know Hart Crane legitimately thinks that's possible, that that remains to be seen. But it is somewhat of a positive message there. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Chaplinesque by Hart Crane. A pretty solid poem, even if it is very much a challenge to understand. I have found that to be the case with many uh, of uh, uh, Hart Crane's other poems, and it almost prevented me from reading it. But again, I, I do want to catalog the extent of poetry that exists out there. If you have any comments which I, I most certainly think you do, uh, or do you just want to comment on my review here, let me know in the comments below. I'll put a link to this poem in the description. Let me know what your thoughts are so that we can uh, have a conversation about that. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, or subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem or this poet or even Poetry Thursday if they do not already know. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and meek travels. Farewell.